So I decided this is not going to be an autobiography. I wanted to write my autobiography when I'm much older. My 70s, perhaps. There's a wealth of generations behind me, probably an empire I've created behind me, grandkids and all that. So I can speak to generations and they will understand that this is a the full mantle of life over and over again. And we can hear this man. But I wanted to give you a roadmap. Um, a sort of sense of how I think. The unorthodox, untraditional, conventional ways I follow approach things that are, you know, in normal life. And the way I've done everything in my life to be different. And I've, the way I've done everything, I've always been an outsider. I've never felt fully accepted anywhere. Seriously, that's a fact. Not in the industry, not anywhere. We all know the story of how I started the industry. We all know the story of what, where my family stood. I've always felt now either but the ones that accept me accept me without reserve the ones that don't accept me misunderstand me and that is only because they don't understand me it's it's really no other ambiguous explanation to it so i sought to offer some sort of perspective perspective is everything in life i've misconstrued people in the past i've read people wrongly in the past put them in a different box just because my sentiments were playing games with my mind I either didn't like them too much. So my judgment of them was always bad. It was always bad. So I felt this was a time to convey a certain perception about me was not you know, found rampantly. So we decided, let's write a book. Let's write a book about how I think. I've ensued different conversations on different subjects, area of subjects under the sun with um, um, friends, with my dad, with, with an associate. And the understanding is always my thought patterns, the way I approach things, like the way I approach grief is different from how people approach grief. The way I, I like to love is different from how I think traditionally people like to love. My, my idea of politics, my idiosyncrasies that have guided me through life, how to deal with betrayal and loyalty, it's always been different. I have people around me that still work for me, that betray me continually, that are not loyal to me, but they're still in my circle. Till tomorrow, they work for me three, four years, I work with them, but I have boundaries, I've set boundaries. You know why? Because their skill set is different. Their skill set is not common. So they can serve their, that is what it is. All this exists in my secret space. My secret space are my kids, okay? My two beautiful boys, they're my kids, they're my wow. sisters. They're my, uh, my dad, okay, my best friends, okay, my, my business reach. I, I own stuff that a lot of people don't even, they're not aware of. I'm not ready to I'm look at really issues about it. I'm, part, I'm partnership on so many realms with different entities that it makes no sense to, to talk about. Because to talk about it might force me to start to live a certain life that, that is anathema to partners. Okay, the fact that they can trust me to say, hey, this is what it is. I, I, I remember this deal we did. You no, know, uh, someone brought me on this deal, you know, an ex girlfriend, okay, brought me on this deal. She called me and said, listen, you were a terrible boyfriend, okay? I couldn't get hold of you. I've seen her twice a year. I was so busy moving around. She said, you have to be the worst boyfriend. You have to be the worst boyfriend ever. How can you leave all this? I mean, she's the what? But at the end of the day, she understands something about me, that I don't play with business. I'm on a different realm. I'm a different animal when it comes to that. And when an opportunity came, she said, you know what? My current boyfriend, I love. But you, as much as I hate our relationship, your business mind, okay, your, your, your ability to break a deal is in a different realm. I will give you this deal. And then we expressly agreed to it, and then we went on to do the deal. It turned out well. Um, it turned out really yeah. crazy. At the end of the day, um, we went to see the other partners. It was something that was conducted, you know, through speeches and lawyers and all that stuff. Um, we went to see the other partners. The day she came, brought us over to make the introduction. I was going with my cousin so that we'll go party. We thought, okay, we just hit some good money. So we're going to go, yeah. go to a rave. This was happening in Maryland. We we're going to hang out, you know, pop some bottles, show people young, black, successful men. I got there. All these guys wanted to know, what's your next deal? What are you doing next? Okay, what, what, who are you partnering with? What is the next thing for you? And it quickly dawned on me 
that we're just starting. These are the different yeah, and so people are different. They think differently. For them, this is an everyday occurrence. For us, African boys, we just thought this is it. You know, so I quickly, you know, when we were on the private jet back home, one of them owned a jet, was going to drop us off in Atlanta. I was, I wanted to take pictures badly. My hmm. cousin, there's no how we're going to be in a jet. This, uh, bro, it's, it's, it's not your regular jet. 